I'm Zia. And I'm Sonora. And we're from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And our question is, if animals have distinct personalities and have been proven to feel emotions like humans, then why does the church teach they don't have souls? Yeah, that's a good question. And go back to Thomas Aquinas, who would say that animals do have souls, uh, but they have a particular type of soul. And what you're describing is their like emotions and personality would be congruent with uh, the soul at that level of complexity. But the church talks about uh, the immortal soul, so our soul, when it has to do with real cognition. And that means the capacity for truly abstract a thought that goes beyond the merely uh, sensible or imaginative. Now, accompany that with will, because will emerges when the mind knows the good as good. So the soul that has mind and will in that sense, we speak of properly as a spiritual soul, as going beyond the material. So that's probably to the point of your question. But I would say animals do indeed have souls, but they wouldn't have immortal souls uh, the way we do. Jesus said there's actually two laws. If you just follow those two laws, you know, you, you did it. You're okay. And he didn't make these things up. He was actually quoting from the Old Testament. He said, love God with all your heart, soul, and might. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if, and if you think about it, that's a complete program. If anything, we would say, and Jesus didn't deny this, he just didn't say it, but that your neighbors are not just human. Your neighbors are not just human. There are, you have, you know, neighbors and other species. Because after all, I mean, consider this I'll give you a very short, simple argument for animal rights, which I think is uh, I think is logically sound. And that is, if God created all creatures, and if a particular creature, like let's say a mammal, like a horse or a pig or a cow or whatever, if a particular creature can feel pleasure and pain, the real pleasure and pain, can feel fear, even terror, as in fact animals can. Anyone that's ever like, you know, like bred horses or dogs, I mean, you know that animals can feel really intense emotions. They can be, they can be terrified. They can be happy. They can feel real pain, agony, and so on. So if God created this capacity to experience pleasure and pain, how could God not care about their pleasure and pain. How could God create, let's say, a dog with the capacity to feel pain and then be completely indifferent when the dog does feel pain? Because if God had not made the dog that way, the dog wouldn't feel pain. God created that vulnerability, you could say. And, and, and so how could God if God created all creatures and, and in, in more developed creatures, a real capacity for pleasure and pain, how could God be indifferent if I cause pain to a creature? And of course, in America, we have this wonderful schizophrenic law system. Like I remember that uh, years ago, there was a quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons who was like having like, you know, mistreating dogs, remember that? Like dog fights and killing dogs and, and the whole country was outraged, and he went to prison. He went to, he went to prison. He did hard time. And you get all these people, you know, talking about how bad it is over their steak dinner. And they didn't see any contradiction there. The fact is, they were, they're eating food which was obtained by horrible brutality to a creature equally conscious, equally conscious. And yet they just, they just don't see the connection. It's interesting because in the Western world, animals don't have rights unless they make cute urban pets. They make cute urban pets. So if you can emotionally bond with a creature because it makes a good urban pet. I mean, a cow makes a nice pet, but on a farm, not in an apartment or house. <clears throat> and so if you think about the philosophy of law, the worst kind of government, the, or, or, or political philosophy, the worst kind of government is where people themselves have no rights, but you live or die at the whim of a tyrant. Whereas in civilized law, the right is in the person himself or herself. And so no matter what 
the ruler may think, the ruler must follow the law. The ruler must respect your legitimate rights, whatever their particular mood swing may be that day. Now, in the case of American law toward non-humans, it's the bad kind of law, that a creature's rights emanate not from the fact that creature is conscious, can feel pain and fear and happiness, but it's just the whim of the lawmaker. It's just the whim of the lawmaker. We like dogs. Dogs have rights. We don't find cows to be so cute. They have no rights. So therefore, why do animals have rights? Because God gave them the capacity to feel pleasure and pain, and therefore you are morally responsible for causing pain to any creature. If you cause pain unnecessarily, you unnecessarily cause pain, suffering to another creature, how can you not be responsible for that? I have to say, this is just me now. One thing which is just, I don't think I'll ever really understand. And that is you see people fishing. And when the fish comes out, what could be, it, it couldn't be more obvious, the fish is in agony. That's why they're squirming on the hook. I mean, they're, you know, they just got a hook through their mouth and they're, you know, desperately thrashing about, dying, and people, wow, that's a good, wholesome sport. I mean, I mean, to have such a, and it's very popular, it's a very popular sport all over the world, to have a sport which is so popular based on obvious agony is something which, it, it's, just, it's just kind of beyond me. I mean, it's just, it's just something I can't quite figure out because it's right there in front of your face. The agony, the suffering is right, right there in front of you. And you just don't see it. So to enjoy someone else's agony, to enjoy someone else's suffering, is a very strange notion of happiness.